All right, y'all, we are here for our second round table, and uh, we want to kind of just go over a little bit of what the Greenville and surrounding area market's kind of doing, because um, we're out there. There's a lot of misconception. There's a lot of news actually out there um, where they're interviewing other agents and other markets and saying that's how the market is here in Greenville. So uh, we've got the uh, famous Brad Ludford down on the far uh, left of your screen. We've got Cole Warren next to me and the ever popular Amy Stone as well. And I'm Brad Allen as well. Um, so let's get going, guys. We've been out there showing and selling. Uh, first of all, we're doing it healthily, healthily, and we're doing it safely, right? But that aside, how is the market? What's going on? What are y'all saying? Okay, I'll go. <laughs> Not everybody uh, wants. I think it's recently, it's been great. Um, tons of buyer activity. Um, the houses that are coming on the market are going really quickly. Yeah. Um, so, so far in the past two weeks, I think it's gone up a whole lot. Yeah. I think one of the stats that stands out to me, and I talked to a lot of friends in the, in, in the business that are some have statewide, um, there we're down about maybe 9% of sales in a month of May this year. Um, last May was the best May on record for just about everybody, every company, everybody. Um, and even the big, big companies that have like 50 offices in our state, they're down about 10%. So, um, we're not seeing anything really die off yet because, uh, for the, the people watching, it, it's usually a 90 day lead time for us. So June is going to be really a good first indication of how the market's going to shake out. But I know y'all, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing contracts. I mean, y'all are writing stuff. So how are buyers feeling in this, in this market? What, do you, what are the trends with them? Are they, are they still buying? Are they getting financing? Or what's going on? Yeah. So to answer that question, Brad, I've, uh, rates have been steady around three and a quarter, three and a half percent. And so that's instilled a lot of confidence in buyers. Uh, borrowing is cheap right now. And so they are still able to get affordable homes for um, the price that they want. So um, I think that's been a huge part um, with rates. And we don't really see rates, at least from lenders that I've talked with, we don't see them going up significantly yeah. um, in the next, in the near future. Yeah. So are y'all seeing, Amy, y'all seeing multiple offers? Are you seeing more competitive offers, the ones that are listing or what are you doing? I think anything under 175,000 is very competitive. Competitive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, multiple offer situation. We're going a lot above asking price. Right. Um, we have a lot of buyers out there that are trying to buy and do not, we don't have the inventory for that. Right. So if you're looking to sell your house, now is the time um, because we have the buyers for you. Yeah. So. Oh, I guess I'm, yeah. I've just actually, in the past week, I've written four contracts, either at or above asking, mm -hmm. and I have lost out on all of those. So um, the people in the room might be asking with that question, are people overpaying then right now? Well, I guess we'll find out when appraisers start doing their job. But um, a lot of them, I mean, all of those have been priced really competitively. Right. So being over asking price, I mean, it wasn't at the highest amount um, that they could get, but they're with pricing it that way competitively, it's pushing it to the highest amount. Right. Um, so just the lack of inventory, I mean, it's driving buyers to, when they see something they like, to jump on it Yeah, full force. A quick um, fact, this week, um, I wrote an offer and Brad Ledford wrote an offer on the same house. Mm -hmm. We didn't even know it until afterwards. And we both did not get um, under contract yeah. um, because it ended up going to a cash buyer. Mm -hmm. And we both had, I think I had an FHA loan, you had a VA loan. Yeah. And um, so our buyers are still pre-qualified and pre-approved. They can get funding, but um, we're losing out to those cash buyers right yeah, now. Yeah, I will say like we, cash hasn't, cash used to be king. After right. recession that you, you would take cash, you would take a <laughs> huge loss just to get a cash mm -hmm. deal because you just have the uncertainty. And there's a little bit of uncertainty right now because people could be getting furloughed. And, you know, sometimes if you've been cutting hours, it can cut back on um, what you can get. But are, are y'all seeing cash winning out on stuff or majority of people still going the loan route? Um, no, I lost out on cash yesterday, too. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we lost out to another cash offer, um, but we lost out on cash. But certainly cash is way better than a mortgage at this moment, just because of the uncertainty, but not everybody can do that. So um, they I mean, can't, but that, that could be a good suggestion though. If, if you do have family mm -hmm. that you could just borrow from and then refinance it out almost immediately, mm -hmm. um, that can save you some money and get you right. the house you want without having to bid it up. That actually happened to one of our, uh, our, our clients. She had the ability to go cash or loan. And she's like, I really want to save my cash, but 
after talking it through, she went with a cash offer and then refinanced out and she got what she wanted mm -hmm. and she was easier to pull the trigger. So, oh, yeah. um, so your buyers are looking, why are they looking? Why are they looking now? Why aren't they holding off? What are the reasons? People need places to live and um, it could be a job transfer or they've been living with family and they've been quarantined too long with their family, um, their mom and dad or whatnot, and they want their own place. So I feel like people are just trying to get out of that multiple family in a house and trying to go out on their own right now. I also would say um, millennials are a large population and they're buying their first home right now. Majority of my clients are first time home buyers, young mm -hmm. couples who've just gotten married or about to have a kid. Um, it's, it's similar in size to the baby boomers. So we're seeing a lot of the baby boomers downsize and we're seeing the millennials, uh, trying to buy homes. So I think that's, I think that's the need to is, is a new generation coming into play. So let's flip it over to sellers. Um, how are the sellers that we have doing and how are clients that you have that might want to sell? What are, what is their thought process right now to hold off, to go on? Like, are they scared of the coronavirus? What's happening? I've had, uh, a mix. I've definitely had some people who they don't they th they don't think they have enough time. Um, just with the kids being home, you're homeschooling, you're now working from home. They're like, maybe I'll just wait until this whole thing is over. Um, also, they want to stay inside. They don't want people seeing their houses. Um, and then I've had others that want to get their house on the market because it is a good time mm -hmm. because it is a fantastic time yes. to sell your house. Um, so it's a, it's a mix of both, which is leading us to having that lower inventory. But the people who do list their house, I mean, you're standing out because there aren't as many other listings. So when your house goes on the market, everyone sees it. You have a lot more buyers in that pool. Um, so it's a mix of both for me. Yeah. So, I mean, do you think that, well, let me rephrase this. I think that what's going to happen and everybody thinks there's going to be pent up demand and that's fine. But I think everybody's going to list their house right when this thing is over or maybe it's two weeks after, maybe it's a month after, but for that next month or two, a lot of things are going to be happening. Um, and I think what a lot of sellers need to think about if they're comfortable with it, maybe going ahead and think about it, getting prepared for it, at least starting the process, because if you're going to wait till it's over, then rip it off right away. Or it might be good to go ahead right now because the more competition, you may not be the cutest house when there's more competition. You may not be the best price because you may not have the most equity. So I would say sometimes push yourself to go ahead and list now. Um, one, because of the shortest inventory, but two, less competition, the better you're going to stand out. Um, but I also, I get it if people don't feel comfortable listing their house now. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I think that um, even having a conversation, if you're thinking about it, have a conversation with one of us and we can go and assess your house and maybe give you some pointers to do while you're under quarantine. And when you're ready to sell and ready to list, then we'll be ready for you. Yeah, it's really, it's really hard to know what the fall is going to look like. Mm -hmm. We have no idea what the rates are going to be, what the buyer demand is going to be like, if there's going to be more inventory. Right now, we do know today that there is low inventory and lots of buyers and low rates. So I think now is a great time to throw a house on a market if you've been thinking about it or on the fence. Um, and like Amy said, there's a lot of things you can do when you're quarantined right now to touch up your house, paint, do some yard work to get it ready. And not everybody can do this, but if you can do this, buying that other home that you want and then moving out of your house and then selling it. So it doesn't matter who's going in there. You're not going back into it. Um, that would be the best case scenario because mm -hmm. interest rates are really low. It's a fantastic time to buy. It's a fantastic time to sell. You get the best of both worlds. Yeah. I have a, it's hard to sell when you have something that you have to sell to buy. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. I think that's, and there's different, and we have vendors that we can recommend that can do things like bridge loans mm -hmm. and some refinances to kind of set you up to be in that. And that's what I did actually personally. I, I bought a place, I closed on it. I'm selling mine. I'm closing soon. And um, I guess like I got it a little bit in reverse, but either way, I'm not out of the house. Like I, I'm controlling my mm -hmm. situation instead of a lot of people get hung up on, they're afraid they're not going to have somewhere to live or they're going to be stressed out. Like I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to control my situation. And so I think there's ways that people can still do that mm -hmm. and buy and sell. Yeah. What you got? No, that's exactly what I was going to say is you can set up a HELOC or some kind of bridge loan and be able to be able to do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if y'all have any specific questions, please reach out to us. Um, we're happy to answer them, um, especially in your specific situation, because they're all different. But at the end of the day, you're going to get the truth from us. You're going to get us, uh, you're going to get the honesty from us. And it may be the best time to sell. It may be the worst time to sell, depending on your situation, which we're happy to talk with. So um, let us know if you have any questions and thanks for watching. Cool. 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 You want to share your stats? <sighs> Damn. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs>